Welcome to this video, a new video on middle game strategy. Yeah, and um, the main theme of this video will be yeah, the fight for the center, the central squares that are so important in chess. Let's look at this, um, this game. It's um, been played in uh, 1900, so quite a long time ago, Paris. Um, between Harry Pillsbury, back then a top US player, and Georg Marco, one of the top players hmm, from Italy, maybe. Hmm. I uh, should look that up, maybe. Yeah, Marco is well known for writing lots of tournament books, um, as well as uh, being a, a good player. Let's see what happened in this game. We got a Queen's Gambit declined. And Pillsbury went for bishop g5. Back then, this was the most common way to play. They played with bishop g5 to get this pin going. Nowadays, many um, players prefer the exchange variation, only then bishop g5. Or they go with the knight f3 and um, setups like that. But bishop g5 of course is of course a normal main line. Bishop e7, e3, castles, knight f3. Yeah, this is um, has been played uh, thousands of times. And nowadays black almost is exclusively plays h6 in this position. The rationale being that gaining this move should be a slight achievement. Yeah, the pawn is very often better on h6 than on h7. It it helps to fight against uh, back rank mates, for example, or just um, to be ready that a possible attack on h7 is not that dangerous. Yeah, the Lasker variation, old name but still very up to date, is played uh, a lot nowadays. All the the TMB, the Tartakova, Makagonov, Bondarevsky variation. The line with three names very often just referred as uh, to the uh, referred um, the Tata Kova. This is also very uh, well analyzed nowadays and a good good way for Black to play. Marco played b6 immediately. He didn't appreciate that h6 might be a useful move. Yeah, Pillsbury went bishop d3, bishop to b7. And now white traded. Note that white traded only on d5 in a situation where the bishop is already on b7. Yeah, quite often it um, can be an idea to wait for exactly this moment. Here, Marco took on d5 with the pawn. Um, this is possible, but I strongly would recommend to play knight takes d5 here. It is uh, not an ideal situation for black. If you um, note that the h7 pawn is uh, still there, not on h6. One reason why this uh, is helpful is a structure like the following. If you look at this, a move like queen c2 now just gains a tempo. Queen c2 is a useful move anyway, and here black needs to react. Nevertheless, I still think that this was um, um, a better way to play than what he did in the game. Um, also, in this type of position, there's also bishop takes d5, which is possible. It's not ideal with the pawn on h7, but, but still. He went e takes, and after that, white now uses <clears throat> this opportunity to put the knight on e5. Of course, white also could castle, play moves like rook c1. But he initiates a central strategy, which nowadays is known as the Pillsbury formation. <laughs> Pillsbury had this uh, type of position a number of times and um, scored um, yeah, excellently well with it. If we return for a moment to this position here, we are already at um, a critical juncture because black now with knight bd7 he commits this knight to this square. Note that on d7, the knight is not attacking much. If we look at the position after f4, it's looking mostly at squares. 
No, that, that's not a square. <laughs> it's looking mostly at squares that are well protected by white. The knight is uh, not in any way applying any pressure on white center. If you look at an alternative, c5 here, it's a different matter. If you get in c5, now, after a possible f4, black might think of putting the knight on c6, maybe straight away. Now he has pressure on d4. This is a far more challenging way to play for black. It puts pressure on white center and makes it a little bit more difficult for white to continue from here. In the game with the knight on d7, black's counterplay is um, yeah, far less defined. How should he uh, get some counterplay? Instead of c5, here he had an additional option that he didn't take. A good alternative here for black was to play knight e4. Considering the fact that black is somewhat cramped here, he's got less space, it's a good idea to get pieces traded. And knight e4 is a good way to initiate uh, that. Yeah, white probably now will aim for this structure. Takes, takes, takes on e7, and now castling. Yeah, this position is um, not clear at all. Black here might try knight f6. Intending c5, you want to attack the center, or you could play f6 immediately, also possible. Something like that is not super convincing for white. Black will have c5 coming. Black is not yet in trouble, but he needs to be precise now. In the game he played c5, which is also good. You want some counterplay. Note that c5 maybe intends to take on d4, but there is no big pressure on this pawn. White castled. And the next move is one absolute key move of this game. And the reason why this is a very instructive example how not to play <laughs> as plaque, or let's say as the side um, battling such a central formation. What black now definitely should do is to go for a knight move to e4 or maybe knight to e8 to try to initiate some trades. For example, if we uh, look at knight e4, you can consider to insert h6. Not totally clear to me if you should do that or play knight e4 immediately. Knight e4. This can be a way to continue after bishop e7, queen e7, Bishop takes d e ninety seven queen d seven d takes e five. We see a slight problem with this move order. Here, those queens are opposed to one another, and black here really does not have a good uh, a good move. Something like capturing just leads to leads to a very bad end game, with c five being weak and black having no play at all. If everything else fails, we go rook c one. This means that probably the immediate knight e4 is slightly tricky. The best solution for black is the following, to take on d4, ed, and then jump to e4. This makes sure that your pressure is reduced, black's um, pressure that he's feeling from, from white. Here black is um, perfectly okay. Yeah, What uh, can white do now? He can maybe take on e7 if we start with that, queen takes. And now go from here. It's not like white has, um, does have anything great here. If we look at rook c1, for example, black might even consider to play f6. Yeah, f6 can be a good move, getting rid of this. Maybe knight e4 is a, is a tricky response. After fe, there's knight g5. But uh, still, f6 is an interesting option. Not necessary, though. Black can also just play this if he wants and support his knight. Here we have, from the pawn structure point of view, an almost symmetrical position. Black has chances because his e4 
knight is also strong he can use this weakness in the game black decided to do something else he played the move c5 to c4 and this is really a gross positional error why the big problem is now you have released all pressure that uh, black had on white center there is no central tension anymore and even the move knight e4 that was a serious option earlier is very problematic now as after those trades and white capturing here after this white really is just a pawn up for no compensation whatsoever knight e4 is not possible black tried the move a6 this is a, a bit lame this move but what exactly should you do one big problem is the knight on e5 if black takes white has an excellent position for instance after the f pawn recapture yeah maybe knight d7 and now white has a good choice he can keep the bishop on the board or can play yeah okay queen h5 there is g6 but it's easiest to just keep this piece on the board and then attack from here if black now tries to do something on the queen side let's say with this then queen g4 is a huge attack this is one key problem with the knight on e5 black has a hard time to take this piece as then white's um, initiative together or supported by the f file really will unfold he played a6 in order to get in b5 and maybe b4 relatively speaking a good move queen f3 a very strong continuation white gets the queen over to the attack on the king side and he controls the sensitive e4 square now white now has e3 under control there are three pieces looking at it so knight e4 now has become uh, completely uh, completely pointless yeah and um, here black does not have f6 because of queen check. e5 check and wins yeah with black being unable to play uh, knight e4 it gets very very difficult now he went b5 trying to get some sort of counterplay white now went queen h3 this is a typical move in uh, this position type the queen is lining up together with the bishop on c2 against the sensitive h7 pawn they are the first uh, here are the really um the first concrete threats white now threatens to take on d7 with a win if we look at a nothing move let's say oh he can even play b4 it's uh, it's the same thing then knight d7 is the big problem for black if he now takes with the queen white is not content with this this is nice but he has a much stronger move and a very typical tactic white can take on h7 check this is all based on the fact that's the queen on h3 is always attacking the queen on d7 after knight takes we just have won the queen after king h8 we have the strong move, bishop f5 check and again we win the queen so knight takes d7 here is a very very strong threat that uh, had been introduced to the position after queen h3 if black takes on e5 also a move that can be considered white replies with the strong move d takes e5 this is even stronger than taking with the f pawn very often you automatically want to take with the f pawn because this is opened but knight e4 here is still pretty tenacious white is better no doubt but um, in this concrete case d takes is even stronger yeah, after knight e4 we play knight takes d takes and rook 81 and here we see a big problem 
this is a very very unfortunate setup and white just wins yeah, black is in huge trouble. He went with g6. That's the relatively um, best defense. Note that h6 is swiftly punished by a peace sacrifice on h6. Yeah, this is just exceptionally strong. Nothing black can do against that. Yeah, he went g6 and now white obviously has a very very nice position but how do we continue yeah note that black has no counterplay in the center he has no pressure on any of those pawns it's a whole different matter if there is a pawn on c5 that at any given uh, moment might take on d4 white now went with f5 directly trying to blow black um, from the board and it is uh, very nicely working in fact black has no defense in this position he tried before and now white crashes through he took on g6 h takes g6 and now white has two very very nice ways to win the first way to win is knight takes d7, taking here. Yeah, white is threatening knight takes f6, so black cannot do something like that after this. Check. It gets very, very ugly. So black needs to recapture. After queen d7, white has queen h4, or he can trade this line for example is uh, is very very much better for white and winning but not like in, in five or ten moves after um, i'm sorry after knight takes white has a strong reply he can smash through on g6 after bishop g6 f takes Check. Queen e6, we see why. This is a huge, uh, a huge uh, multiple attack. King somewhere and bishop e7. It does not matter where the king goes. So a very strong and um, and quick attack unfolding. Yeah, black took with. Um, uh, sorry, uh, sorry. White didn't take on d7. It was strong, but uh, Pillsbury played queen h4. Yeah, this move also wins. This move also wins. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, the point is that now, after the capture on c3, white can take on d7. And this just introduces a big, big overload. Yeah, knight takes. Very simple. And after um, queen takes, white now can <clears throat> finish things off with rook takes f6. That's even better than bishop takes. After bishop takes and something like that, um, it's clear that black is on the ropes, but there does not seem to be a direct mate coming. After rook f6, this is really completely indefensible. If black now would have taken on b2, then just rook af1 intending bishop takes g6. This is just a far too, um, yeah, this is just an overwhelming attacking position. Black has really no moves to defend. This is of course very easy. Mating soon. Yeah, a5 was played. And now rook af1, just using all pieces. Bishop takes g6 was already leading to, to a quick a quick defeat for black as well. After takes, takes, check. king f7, rook f1, check. Check. King e8, bishop. Check. Uh, the bishop um, now recaptures on f8. I'm sorry. Queen h5. White is winning due to this multiple discoveries that black cannot defend against. This is, however, a bit um, a bit tricky. So rook a f1 was played, and uh, black has no defense now. Bishop takes g6 is an overwhelming threat. 
black went rook a6 and now white plays the finishing touches took on g6 threatening mate black mistake white Check. trades on f8 and now needs to find the right continuation white to play and win Check. Yeah, rook takes f8. Check was played. <laughs> a very nice finish. Black has no big choice. He needs to take. And then we have check. Queen uh, on h8. Check here. Queen h7 made. Check. And here black has uh, no move anymore. This is a mate. Check mate. So he only has a king move that uh, gives up the queen like this. And white uh, will win with checkmate even. This is indefensible. Yeah, a very nice win here by Pillsbury. Why did he win this game so easily? The main reason is that black did not fight for the control of the center in, in, a, in a suitable way. The first moment was here where he could have played the more active setup c5 and knight c6, putting pressure on d4. The second uh, important moment comes when he went c4, which is really a big mistake. If black instead plays knight e4, or the capture first, which is a bit more precise, and then knight e4, then black does not have uh, many problems. He has uh, ideas on his own, especially the knight on e4 is well placed. The way it unfolded after c4 and, uh, and a6, Black has no counterplay in the center. The knight on e5 is super strong and can rarely ever be taken. So um, black's um, problems are permanent here. And uh, with very quick attacking moves, Pillsbury got um, an overwhelming position. All right, I hope you enjoyed this, learning about a new pawn structure, the Pillsbury structure in the center. And it's also very important lesson that you must try to initiate counterplay in the center if possible. If you don't, it might happen that the opponent's buildup is so strong that you are mostly a spectator to what's happening. All right, thanks for watching.